In this video I'll explain how to create a ggplot2 plot with breaks and zoom using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So in this video I will show you two examples and both of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with the lines 2 and 3 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data. And if you click on this data set, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data contains two columns, which are called group and value. And as you can see, the values column contains four relatively low values and one relatively large value. Now, if we want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines five and six of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line six of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to apply the functions of the ggplot2 package, such as ggplot and geombar, as you can see in lines eight and nine. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right, that we have created a bar plot, which is showing the five rows in our data. And you can also see that the first four bars in our bar plot are relatively small because the fifth bar in our bar plot is very large. Now let's assume that we want to zoom into the first part of our bar plot to visualize the smaller bars a bit better. Then we can apply the code that you can see starting in line 11. So in lines 11 to 15 of the code, I'm creating a new data set, which is splitting our data in a part that we want to zoom in and into a part that we do not want to zoom in. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that a new data frame is appearing at the top right, which is called data extended. So if you click on this data set, you can see that we have created a new data frame, which is containing nine rows and three columns. The first two columns, group and values, are representing the values of our input data. However, we have created a third column, which is called zoom, and this column shows an indicator for one part of the plot where we want to show all of the bars and another part of the plot where we want to zoom in. And as you can see in the lower part where we want to zoom in, we have contained only the first four bars that we want to show in a larger size. So in the next step, we can use this data extend data object to create a facet wrap ggplot2 plot, as you can see in lines 17 to 19 of the code. And in line 19 of the code, I'm applying the facet wrap function to create a zoomed version of our data set. So if you run lines 17 to 19 of the code, you can see that a new plot is created at the bottom right of RStudio, which is showing two plots in the same plot window. And on the left side, you can see the plot without zoom as we have already created before. However, on the right side of the plot, you can see a zoomed version, which is showing only the first four bars in our bar plot. So in this first part of the tutorial, I have explained how to use the facet wrap function to create a bar plot in two different windows, one window which is showing all the data and one window which is showing a zoomed in version of our data. However, it is also possible to use the ggforce package to create such a plot and this is what I want to show you in the next example of this tutorial, starting in line 21. So in lines 21 and 22, I'm first installing and loading the ggforce package. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 22 of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggforce package, such as facet zoom. And in lines 24 to 27 of the code, I'm applying these functions to create a zoomed version of our bar plot. So if you run lines 24 to 27 of the code, you can see that another plot is created at the bottom right. And as you can see on the left side of this plot, the y-axis is ranging from zero to 10. So in this case, we have a zoomed version of our plot. And you can also see that the last bar in our bar plot is cut off. 
And then on the right side of the plot, you can see the entire plot with an y-axis range of 0 to 100. So in this case, you can see the entire plot. And as you can see, the first four bars are shown very small. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.